government, Mr. Vela von Kramer. Today we have a question from Azerbaijani audience. Uh, I have a question, first question, regarding your recent trip to Azerbaijan. What did you think about the current situation with the human rights, functionality of democratic institutions in Azerbaijan? Did you able to find some facts about the issues? and what your expectations? Well, unfortunately, I mean, I've been to Azerbaijan in 2010, 2011, 2013, and now again after eight years um, that have passed, but there was not a real progress, there was not a real improvement in terms of uh, rule of law, um, standards for human rights, uh, implementations of significant reforms. Um, we have met with different paper um, ministers, the president, but also human rights defenders, journalists, um, independent uh, civil society representatives, and they're actually all on the same page. They were all saying that the situation has rather worsened than uh, um, than progressed or uh, improved. And of course, uh, with the increase of um, our gas demand from Azerbaijan, uh, the country or especially uh, the regime is in a very comfortable situation and that does not make our life easier. And uh, what do you think? What is next? Because as we know for the day before, uh, President of European Commission, uh, von der Leyen, she uh, met also with Ali, but unfortunately she's denied to meet with the civil society. Pre on previous visit of the President of the European Commission, like when Barroso visited Azerbaijan, he met with, always with civil society. He's also given us hope for his discuss with Ali, about the importance of reform, with it making more available uh, possibilities for civil society. But this visit is only discussions about gas. She signed agreement, even she is not able to respond for all the questions for independent measures, and she didn't meet with the political positions and uh, civil society. Why this happened? What do you think? What is your reaction as like European parliamentarians? Mm. Um, yes, um, I understood that that visit of uh, the Commission President was very short. It was really only focused on this um, gas agreement or this gas deal. That is very unfortunate. I fully agree. I criticized this openly on Twitter and on other media um, instantly. Uh, but even if you have only time for a short um, visit with the Azerbaijani President, you could have at least mention some of the individuals who suffered the most, who were tortured, who were raped in front of the cameras. No, but you could even mention this in the meeting with Aliyev, yeah. but not even that had happened. So she has neither men, uh, met with the independent media representative, uh, nor has she spoken to civil society, nor to the political prisoners, nor to political opposition party. This is not good, and I've criticized that. I've also spoken to some of the members of the cabinet. Uh, I criticized that openly. I said, if you want to uphold the values of the EU, one thing is to, let's say, intensify the gas relations, but if uh, at the same moment that country um, occupies territory or starts a military attack on the neighbor state, as Azerbaijan have done now, a plus um, uh, proceed uh, with the repression uh, domestically. This needs to be at least raised as a topic. Yeah? This needs to be rhetorically uh, formulated and that has not happened. And that is definitely, I mean, um, damaging our credibility in Azerbaijan and the South Caucasus. Uh, in your delegations, from which is leading by Mr. David McAllister, uh, you have a six MP, which is I saw it on the public TV and state TV. You met with the president, discussed, and uh, but how many persons participate on the meetings uh, on? Uh, because as I know, not all of these members of parliament, which is met with the president, 
uh, participate on the meeting with the civil society. Yeah, there were all of them. It, all of you, uh, including. I think. Uh, because uh, some of my colleagues say, for when we try to double check who is participating, what you able to express, uh, because we, Mr. Mariani. I don't remember whether he was there or not. You know, I mean, yeah. um, I'm not the head of the, I was not the head of the mission. And honestly, yeah, uh, another question, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really matter who yeah, was there because it yeah. was dark. It was, it was a, it was a coffee place. It was loud yeah, music. It was very unpleasant yeah. altogether. And we had two tables and it was a bit difficult to communicate in a proper way. Yeah, so I did not feel, I did not feel too comfortable. So we went outside. Outside it was also difficult to get everyone on board, so overall it was not the best setup for, uh, let's say, more uh, intimidate, uh, intim um, uh, discussion. Yeah, we speak with uh, some of our colleagues, which is uh, recently received threats for their lives from mm. the ruling party officials, from law enforcement agencies, bosses, and unfortunately they say for because that's what you mentioned, like. Uh, very loud music and places not appropriate for this kind of meetings. Yeah. They do not, but what do you think? How is European Parliament and their members supposed to build like the bridge between the civil society and, and like independent media and alternative stakeholders in Azerbaijan? Uh, which kind of like uh, hopes for them you have? I mean, the regime is an autocracy. I mean, we do not have to um, water this down. We do not have to paint this in rosy um, colors. That is a very unpleasant um, and very, I mean, how to say, it's a very unmodern, uh, non-modern uh, autocracy. And it's built on family clans, it's built on nepotism, um, and of course, we will not change this from outside. But what we can do is what I said before. At least we can give those people, independent journalists, uh, civil society, a voice. Uh, we could meet with them, we can have press conferences, we could uh, mention their names who were threatened and intimidated by the law enforcement, by policemen uh, directly. We can also cut off uh, access to the EU for those who are responsible for this treatment, for torturing, for raping, uh, for intimidating people. But some of them, we know, they have even an EU uh, Schengen visum. And this does not fit together. Okay, we need this gas. Uh, we have to work um, together with the Azerbaijani authorities. Uh, but on the other hand, we should not be silent on the uh, repressive side of the regime. Uh, yes, it's totally understandable for Europe right now needs the gas because we have issues with the Russian gas supplies. But Azerbaijani uh, society also looking for additional like benefits, like because you provide, you pay for this gas. But we as like civil society, we want to create accountable mechanisms and ask them for. How did you spend this money? Because like we received like from oil and gas from last 20 years approximately yeah. 200 billion dollars, and half mm -hmm. of this money is stolen by a ruling regime, according to independent, local, and international experts. But how are we supposed to survive in every year since from 2013 when I leave, move for the third presidential terms? Is completely make space for civil society super shame. Mm. Okay, it's, and it's impossible to survive. EU not provide financial support. And even if they are provided, mm. like uh, Mother von der Leyen say, uh, this money going to Gongos, mm. state yeah. and mm -hmm. oil NGOs, and most of this also money is going to some kind of international NGOs, like bureaucratic NGOs, mm. which is working in Brussels mm. and other international capitals. But 
uh, people which is try to survive on the front line, mm. journalists, etc., etc., they're going and asking EU. Mm. You know, but, but it is. <laughs> I mean, how the money is spent, the revenues from um, oil and gas, we cannot control this. This is up to... It's up to our resources. Absolutely. And, 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 the, yeah, and, and also, I don't know, the financial department and whatsoever. So, sorry to say, but that is as it is. It's not up to the European Parliament to control the money. What we can do is, of course, if this landed on offshore accounts, uh, work together with transnational um, organizations for uh, financial integrity, NGOs working on that, um, transparency, people like you, investigative journalists, support them with our money. That's for sure, absolutely. But to prevent this from happening, this is up to some of the forces within uh, the Azerbaijani society. But you are absolutely right, and there I think you have a strong point. We should not give the money for the civil society to Congress, for those who actually work for the regime. Well, yes, transparency. absolutely, uh, absolutely. No, but but I'm, you know, I'm not even the shadow uh, rapporteur at the moment. This is my colleague. Um, I speak with her and make interviews. Exactly. Uh, Santos. Yeah. Isabel Santos from Portugal, from Azerbaijan. And also Marketa Gregorova, she is our, our shadow rapporteur from the Green Group. No, what we need to set up is um, a stronger network between those people in Azerbaijan working on this issue and our people who need to influence the Commission, because the, finally the Commission makes the decision. The Commission um, approves the, the treaties, the Commission gives the money for the civil society society, support of the journalist, and so on. And how to make sure that the money is finally allocated um, to those people who are in need and to those people who do the good job, the quality journalism. Um, it is extremely difficult. Uh, may I ask you last, because we have a lot of yeah. minutes already, and for the last minutes, I want to ask on, each, on the topics of regarding bilateral relations, in your point of view, how is Europe as like German uh, EU Parliament members look for bilateral relation between Azerbaijan and Germany? Because now, what we observe, mm. uh, Germany just day before your visit, because in your delegation we also saw two German politicians, David McAllister and you, but day before we saw for, for German Bundestag vice president, she also visited Azerbaijan and uh, like she also met with the civil society and we were able to explain what's going on in our country. And uh, for us again, it's like president of European Commission, she's also like one of the strongest German political voices, like she's former minister of defense. Yeah, it's like you have a leading role. And what do you think how Germany themselves like uh, able to help to Azerbaijan? When I say for not, yeah, it's not your obligation to help, but when you some German politician, for example, I'm sure for it now after you, like for example, uh, head of the parliamentary assembly of the uh, head of the socialist and green groups. Uh, Mr. Schwab, eh? mm. to make a country visit. Like I said, for old, mm. surprise, it's too many mm. German officials, and that's what we have a host, so maybe you can mm. engage with the lead. You're able to say, okay, if you want to be our business partner, mm. move forward mm. on the, our European values, like a democracy, free media, other fundamental rights, much more accountability compared with current situation. Uh, how German politicians able to push on this agenda? Or do you think, they, because we are afraid, because some, it's mm -hmm. again, it's like extra safe for now, and some politicians even here or in the Council of Europe say, for well, you know, now it's winter is coming, mm -hmm. it's too difficult uh, pushing a leave is very sensitive issues, which is usually not mm. like it. Uh, do you see window of, of opportunities for us? We still, you make a business deal with him and also tell him, for, look, you 
should apply. Well, as, as I said before, I mean, he has an interest to have a proper price. The proper price is not paid by anyone. It's not paid by the rather poor neighbors. It's paid by the European Union. I think with this, we have a leverage. And of course, we should be more outspoken. We should. As I said before, I mean, we should support those people and we should openly also criticize this. I mean, um, but the problem is that in the situation where we are now and this long term um, uh, regime of Aliyev, many people probably have given up that we can change something in Azerbaijan. No? Uh, but I mean, <laughs> If we had a let's say a stricter um, procedure on our side, European Council, so all the heads of states, together with uh, uh, Ursula von der Leyen and uh, the Parliament, of course we could make a difference. What do you think is the Greens have different agenda? The Green, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, leader of your party. Yes. Yeah. Did they have a different view on crackdown in countries like Azerbaijan? Of course. So the Greens always had a different approach uh, to uh, the repression in uh, in Azerbaijan. They have a complete different approach to human rights. Our foreign minister, of course, I cannot speak for her, but I know from other situations when she uh, was approaching Lavrov in uh, in uh, Moscow, or so when she went to the uh, Western Balkan stage, how she approached Vucic and others. So there was a different approach, especially on human rights rights, especially in opposition and independent media. I do hope she will have the same, uh, let's say, attitude and the same approach in uh, Azerbaijan. But as I said, I'm not the executive, I'm not a minister, and I have not the right to speak on behalf of her. But generally, we Greens are uh, more based on uh, human rights and value-based uh, foreign policy. Thanks a lot. Thank you. And we hope to see you next parliamentary session. Yes.